All right, buckle up, everybody, because today we're diving headfirst into some seriously mind-bending physics. Oh, yeah. We're talking about retrocausality. The idea that the future could actually influence the past. Exactly. Specifically in the quantum realm, too. We're going to try to unpack a research paper. As is dense, I'll admit. It's called Explaining Retrocausality Phenomena in Quantum Mechanics Using a Modified Variational Principle. Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's a mouthful. It is. But we're here to break it all down and hopefully make some sense of it all. What's really cool about this paper yeah. is how it connects a bunch of different concepts together. Okay. And it all starts with this thing called Lagrangian mechanics. Okay, so I remember Lagrangian mechanics from like, you know, way back in my physics classes. Right. But how does that relate to something as wild as retrocausality? Well, so Lagrangian mechanics is all based on this idea called the principle of least action. Okay. Which is kind of this idea that Nature likes to be efficient. Uh -huh. You know, it always finds the most optimal path. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is that this principle, it actually underpins both classical mechanics. Right. Like how a ball moves through the air. Yeah. And it also underpins quantum mechanics. Oh, wow. Which governs like subatomic particles. So it's like this bridge almost. Yeah. Between the familiar world that we see, you know, every day. Yeah. And this bizarre world of quantum mechanics. Exactly. And that's why it's so fascinating to think about retrocausality in this framework, right? Yeah. Because if the principle of least action applies to both of these realms, then could retrocausality also bridge those two worlds? That's a wild thought. It is. So how does this paper actually tackle retrocausality? So they introduce this concept of what are called causal and retrocausal derivatives. Okay. And you can think of these as like mathematical tools to describe actions unfolding yeah. forward and backward in time. Okay. So imagine like watching a movie, right? Yeah. Causal derivatives would be like playing the movie forward. Right. And retrocausal derivatives would be like rewinding it. Okay, I get that. Yeah. But wouldn't, I mean, wouldn't a retrocausal process be super unstable? Right. Like things happening out of order, you know, completely defying logic. Yeah, and they acknowledge that. Okay. So what they do is they develop a kind of modified Lagrangian Okay. that includes both of these components, uh -huh. causal and retrocausal. Mm -hmm. And this leads to separate wave equations for each direction of time. Okay. And they use these equations to kind of model how a system might behave yeah. under this, you know, retrocausal influence. So they're kind of playing it forward and backward yeah. and seeing what happens. And they use this example of a damped oscillator. Okay. So, you know, like a pendulum. And slowly. Yeah, slowing down because of friction. Loses energy. Exactly, to illustrate this potential for instability. So if you rewind that, yeah. it would look like it's gaining energy out of nowhere. Right, exactly. But the real interesting stuff happens when you apply this causal, retrocausal framework to quantum mechanics. Okay, now we're getting to the good stuff. Yeah. What did they find? Well, they found that when you apply this framework to these quantum systems, right. you actually end up with two separate wave functions. Two separate wave functions. One for causal actions and one for retrocausal actions. True. But here's the real kicker. Okay. The retrocausal wave function turned out to be mathematically the same is the complex conjugate. The complex conjugate. Of the causal wave function. Okay, now I vaguely remember complex conjugates from my math classes. Yeah. But remind me why this is such a big deal. Sure. So in quantum mechanics, wave functions often involve these complex numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which include that imaginary unit. Right, right. And taking the complex conjugate of something basically means you just change the sign of that imaginary part. Okay. And it's a really routine operation yeah. used all the time in quantum calculations. So we've been doing this all along. Yeah. But what this paper suggests yeah. is that this seemingly simple operation might actually be a hidden form of retrocausality. Hold on. So you're saying that something we've been doing in quantum mechanics forever yeah. could be a sign of the future influencing the past. Potentially, yeah. That's pretty mind-blowing. It is, and it raises some really interesting questions about the nature of time and causality. This is already getting really deep, and I have a feeling we're just scratching the surface. Yeah, it's just the beginning. Okay. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah, if like if this complex conjugate thing is a sign of retrocausality, right. what does that even mean for like cause and effect, you know? Like, yeah. Is our future already set, and it's influencing our present somehow? I mean, that's one way to think about it. Right. But it's not the only way. Okay. I mean, it could also mean that time is way more fluid and, like, interconnected than we think it is. Okay. 
like maybe our past, present, and future, they're all kind of influencing each other Whoa. in ways that we're just starting to like barely understand. So instead of like a straight line of time, yeah. it's more like everything's happening at once. Yeah, like a big jumbled mess. Past and future are constantly like talking to each other. Exactly. It really makes you question what time even ISS. us. Yeah. And, you know, it has these huge implications. Yeah. Not just for physics, but maybe for how we think about consciousness, even free will. Wow. Okay. So we've got this crazy idea of the complex conjugate maybe representing retrocausality. Yeah. What else is this paper like? Explore. Well, another really cool area they look at is using these things called fractional Lagrangians. Okay. In quantum mechanics. Now, I got to admit, fractional Lagrangians, that's a little out of my depth. Sure. Can you, can you break that down a bit? So in classical mechanics, a Lagrangian is just this... Uh, it's a mathematical function, right? Okay, okay. That helps describe how a system moves. Okay. And a fractional Lagrangian is basically like a tweaked version of that. Okay. That can model systems that are losing energy over time. Okay. What we call like dissipative systems. So like that pendulum, that's slowing down exactly. because of the friction. Uh, right. Okay. And so what's really interesting is that when they apply this fractional Lagrangian approach to quantum mechanics, yeah. they end up with this modified wave equation Okay. That looks a lot like the equation for, you guessed it, a damped oscillator. So even in like the quantum world, yeah. things can't escape like losing energy over time? Seems like it. Okay. But what's really cool is that the solutions to this like damped wave equation oh. in this quantum context, yeah. they're, they're pretty much unexplored. Oh, wow. And they can give us new insights into some really weird quantum stuff we see. Like what kind of stuff? Well, think about like quantum entanglement okay where two particles are linked and like no matter how far apart they are yeah it's spooky it's really bizarre right yeah. it's been bugging physicists forever what about quantum tunneling yes where a particle can just go right through a barrier exactly that it shouldn't be able to it defies all logic right yeah so these are things that like just don't make sense in our classical understanding of physics yeah and this new framework mm -hmm. with these damped quantum systems yeah it might actually give us a new way to think about how these impossible things actually happen. So this research, it's not just like abstract math. Right. It could actually help us understand some of the most fundamental mysteries of the quantum world. Exactly. It's like we're getting a new set of glasses <laughs> to look at the quantum realm with yeah. glasses that, you know, actually consider how the future might be influencing the present. It's pretty exciting. It, we, we could be like right on the edge of unlocking this whole new understanding of the universe totally. and everything in it. And it's not just about understanding the universe either. Okay. I mean, this could totally change how we see ourselves, our consciousness, even our place in like Obviously. the grand scheme of things. Okay, now we're getting really philosophical. Oh, right, right. But before we go too far down that rabbit hole, let's just take a step back and recap what we've talked about. Okay. So we started with retrocausality. This idea that the future could influence the past. Right. We talked about how the complex conjugate, this math tool we use in quantum mechanics, yeah. could be a sign of this retrocausality happening. A subtle sign, yeah. And then we went into fractional Lagrangians yeah. and this idea of damped quantum systems. You're right. And how those could help us understand those really strange quantum phenomena. Entanglement, yes, funneling. Exactly. My brain is definitely starting to hurt. It's a lot to take in. But I feel like we're just getting started. Oh yeah. What else is there to uncover in this deep dive? So we've really gone deep, haven't we? Exploring all these possibilities of the future influencing the past. We have. Where does all this research leave us? I think it really opens up some massive questions. Yeah. Like we're talking about it challenges how we think about time. Yeah. Like maybe it's not just the straight line. Right, right. Like we always assume it is. It really is mind blowing to think about, yeah. you know, the past, the present, the future, all kind of mixing together. Intertwined somehow. Yeah. And what that means, not just for physics. Right. But like for us, for our choices. It makes you think about free will, you know. Right. right. Like the future is already kind of shaping things now. Yeah. How much control do we actually have? a big question. It's a huge question. Something philosophers, yeah. physicists have been debating forever. Yeah, yeah. And this research just adds a whole other layer to it. It's like we're looking under the hood of the universe yeah. and realizing it's way weirder. Much more complicated. Than we thought. Yeah. But l let's, let's come back down to earth for a minute. Okay. We were talking about those damped quantum systems. Right. And how they could explain some of the, the weird things we see in the quantum world. 
Exactly. So remember how they proposed using this idea yeah. of a fractional Lagrangian? Which is usually used for systems losing energy to describe quantum systems. And by doing that, you yeah. might be able to model these quantum systems okay. that show this kind of damping effect. So even at the smallest level, yeah. things might be losing energy over time. It seems that way. Yeah. And the really interesting thing yeah. is that these solutions to this danked wave equation, oh. yeah. they could give us a whole new way to think about oh, okay. things like entanglement. You know? Oh, yeah. And tunneling. The spooky stuff. The really weird stuff. The things that just make you question, like, yeah. what is going on? Like, how can two particles be linked across huge distances? Right. How could a particle just go through a wall? Defy all logic. Exactly. These are things that have just stumped scientists for, for ages. Yeah. And this new framework yeah. with this damping idea mm -hmm. might actually give us a way to understand. To so make sense of it. Yeah. How these seemingly impossible things could actually work. It's like we're finally peeking behind the curtain a bit. Yeah, yeah. Getting a glimpse. Of this strange quantum world. Exactly. And that glimpse yeah. could lead to like all sorts of crazy stuff. Oh, absolutely. Not just understanding the universe better, right. but like technology. Imagine like new types of quantum computers. Yeah. New ways to communicate. It's exciting. The possibilities are kind of endless. And a little bit scary, too. It is, because it really highlights how much we don't know right. about the universe. Yeah. It's a good reminder to, like, stay humble yeah. and keep asking questions. Well, I think that about wraps up our deep dive into retrocausality. I think so. And its implications, which are uh, numerous. Definitely. I don't know about you, but my head is spinning. Mine, too. Yeah. It's, it's a lot to process. But that's what makes exploring these big questions so fun. Absolutely. It's a reminder to stay curious. Always. And keep questioning and just never stop exploring the mysteries of the universe. The universe is full of them. Even the ones that make us question everything we thought we knew about time and reality. Exactly. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder. Yes. The possibilities. Keep exploring. Until next time, keep diving deep. Mm -hmm.